Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are still at the Raw Science Film Festival, the fifth annual, propagating epicness in media about science and inspiring the next generation of creators. We are now with Suse Green. Hello. Yes. <laughs> I love thank the you way for, you said it. Thank you so much for Lovely coming to be the show. Here. It's Re my pleasure. Really excited to talk all yes. things yes. songwriting, all things American singer-songwriter of the Supremes, right. a steam advocate, mm -hmm. activist, super pumped to talk about all of this. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. Sure. And just the soul that came mm. through you into me when you were mm. singing on stage yes. was very profound. It just rang through me. Wow. I had to stand up and dance. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. Love you it. know, that's the, the good result. Mm. And just to give you an idea of who she is, the song's Unconditional Love. Yes, indeed. So. It's be out in just a few days. Yeah. Sold everywhere. <laughs> yes. Everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's a new world. We need to awaken to the unconditional love. Mm. Yes, we do. We do. So let's let's jump into that specifically. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we find ourselves here after a long period of, of evolution. We like taking sure. a big history perspective on things. Sure. So now we're stewards of Earth after this long period yes. of time. We have exponential technology happening, mm -hmm. all this population of people. Mm -hmm. But the heart, the heart-centric, yes. are we educating kids mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. realm of thinking? What's your synthesis on the current state of humanity? Oh my. We, we are hopeful because there is a very large group of conscientious people who believe that there is hope for us as a, what shall we say, as a race of human beings, you know? And we have the opportunity because of the technology, because of the knowledge, to do anything great, anything fine. And we don't a lot of times because people are fooled, I think, by fame. You know, they want, they want fame. So many young people want to be famous. But if you ask them for what, they don't necessarily have a particular talent. They have the passion and the determination to do something great. But they're not preparing. You know, when I was going to school, you, you took music classes and you, you took art history and, and you know, you, you prepared. If you were going to be a musician, and this is what I always tell young people, if you're going to be a musician, you need to prepare. You need to take some music classes. You need to learn how to read music. And if you're a singer, you need to nurture that talent. You know, I, I was very blessed in that my own mother was a vocal coach. She was a tremendous classical pianist. She was deadly serious about it. You, you did what you had to do. And she was my first coach. She taught me to love music. And my mother and father were some of the first black DJs in America. So it made for a, a wonderful music education. Seriously. My, my father was into jazz. So I learned all kinds of things, like Illinois Jacquette and Willie the Lion Smith, you know, Miles and all these people who really believed that music was a healer. And that's quite a thing right yeah. there. And that's what's missing right now. Mm. You know, I talked to Mickey Stevenson, who was the first A&R man at, at Motown. And he's the one who put the Funk Brothers together, the group that supported all the acts, that played on all those hit records. And the thing that he said was, music is sacred. It is. The sounds make you feel, yes. like you said, your soul. You feel something in your soul. Well, there's a lot of music that I like nowadays, but there's also a, music, a lot of music that is not melodic. You know, it'll have one or two chords, no chord changes at all. And the rap community, the hip hop community has been very kind to me because two particular songs, one was Free, that was Denise Williams' first million seller. As I just got to be free. That. And you know, it, it's a cultural icon type of song. And rappers have embraced it, have loved it, and have sampled it. And the same with I Can't Help It which I wrote with Stevie Wonder on Michael Jackson's Off the Wall album. And that album changed pop music because it had such a broad spectrum of 
dance ability, great lyrics, great melodies, and the particular song, that particular song, Stevie had written for himself, for songs in the key of life. And his sister, who grew up with Michael and all his family, said, you should let Michael sing that. And, you know, he kind of, um, I don't know, you know, because it's a great song. It's hard to let a great song go sometimes. But he was right to let Michael do it, you know. And, and it was the one song on that album that was sort of Michael's most sophisticated presentation as an adult, as a young adult. But music, and I think the power of music is in the feeling, mm -hmm. is that we translate that to other people. We go all around the world, we travel, and people don't speak the, the same language, but come on, we, we all feel, we all fall in love, we all want, wish, desire. You know, it's a commonality that we share. And that's very important to me. There's a couple things I want to address here. The first thing is that and we're going to get into your path in music here. Yes. You started hinting at it, and now it started sure. getting really delicious and exciting. Sure. I, I like it. I like it. Um, not only did you tie in music and how you prepared yes. your, with your family as well, mm -hmm. with mom and dad, mm -hmm. but how a lot of us now are born mm -hmm. and not necessarily preparing. How sure. many of the 7.7 .7 billion? Mm. I have, I have identified, the ones that are old enough, have yes. identified with their mission in yes. life, what their purpose is on this planet. Not only that, but then are they making the short-term steps that they need to hmm. do every day in order to actualize that mission? Yes. That's an interesting thought. And we need to get to hmm. a society that pushes that paradigm That's more and more. Right. More and more. Sure. And, 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 and when the, when a child is born, we're mm. able to help them identify what that mission is, yes. and then give and help give them the right tools that they need to to get there. Sure. And and, the, and it's a whole perspective shift on mm. oh you you I, oh we want we want fame or we yes. want money or we want materialistic yes. objects. No, you mm. want a, a, something important is impact. I want to bring value to the world. I want yes. to. I want to inspire the rest of the world exactly. to have an awareness shift, exactly. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I loved how you brought that there. So now let's let's talk mm -hmm. let's talk music all related right. to you started teaching us about, you know, mom was singing. Yes. And that's huge. That's already hugely influential. Of course. And even in, in the epigenetics coded in the body yes. infant to that's you. That's right. And then the father and mother oh both DJing yes. as well. So sure. so tell us about how you started picking it up and then because oh I love how you say it's oh, it's about that 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 tr that translation of the soul sure. of the soul and of vibe. course yeah of course yeah. feelings feeling you know? yeah. when I was a very little girl I, I was told I always sang I would be humming something I wrote my first song at eight years old you know but music had a special place in my heart because I've always known that it was a part of me, you know? I sang, I wrote songs, I created. And that's the thing right there, is the creation of things. Creators, writers, and it, it develops, you know? The things that you do, the things that you think, the things that you think are what you become. But the main thing, aside from music, that my mother taught me was that nothing is impossible. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. Love you it. know, she was the youngest person to ever graduate from Prairie View College. She was 17. She was a brilliant woman. When she graduated from college, mm -hmm. she was so young at college, she had to have a chaperone. Can you imagine that? Party pooper, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but she was a serious student. She had been nurtured. Her talent was nurtured. She played Mozart at three. She was a child prodigy. And because she was surrounded by people who knew that she had tremendous talent, and she was a natural teacher, she instilled that in us. She told me that as a woman, as a black woman, as a, a short person, as a so many things, you can be maligned or put down, and yet, you can do anything that you decide to do because other people's opinions of you, you know, everybody loves a winner, see? So if you have that 
focus, and that's the main difference, I believe, focus between young people who don't do something, don't have a drive or a desire, and people who create and make something, make a legacy, make a difference, is focus, determination, you know? You have to know. I've always known what I was going to do. And yet I know people who still, at 50, 60, they don't know what they want to do in life. And we all search for that. See, that's the thing. We search. And I think, you know, if you have an inkling, excuse me, I believe you have to be passionate. There has to be something. And it doesn't matter what your passion is. If you're passionate about orchids, then you should be doing something with orchids for your life. But what we do is we think, okay, P. Diddy, you know, it's all about the money. More money, more problems. The beat, all these things, the clothing, the lights, it's all attractive to people and not just young people, but it's a false thing, you know? If you have something that you are passionate about, it's not about how much money you can make in life. You can be happy with less, but I think somebody has to tell you that, you know? I really do. I have, I've been very blessed. I have. I've had opportunities to see things, to travel, to do things, to sing, places that other people have never been and may not. But many people are inspired by the fact that I'm humble, that I know I'm talented. If I weren't confident in what I do, I wouldn't be able to do it. When you have five rain, you know, a range of five octaves, you have to be confident to hit those notes. Whoa. It's control, you know? That's five octave five octaves. range? Yes, absolutely. Whoa. You know? And it depends on the day. It can be more, you know, but then those only the dogs can hear, right? <laughs> that's more than a string mm. like a violin or a viola mm. cello, because sure. that's four octaves. Sure. But it's natural, you understand? I believe, you know, it's, you can learn, but a natural talent. I can sing high when I struggle to sing low sometimes, depending upon how I feel. It's my natural range, you know? So Whoa. the confidence, yep. the fact that my mother told me that I was loved and I believed her, yeah. that you can do anything that you try if you put your heart and soul into it, if you are focused as well oh my goodness yes yes sky's the limit yeah those mm. were so good right there that was mm. so good mm. the again that second that that's such an important part yeah yes. unconditional love from yes. mother the fa you can do anything sure. you set your mind to you retain focus sure. i'm interested if you could have done what you did mm. if you were addicted to social media mm. because it didn't exist back sure. then but well, that's what that's a big that's distraction that's very true it's a big it is a big distraction but social media doesn't distract me many many classic artists who have been big stars who have done great things are afraid to deal with social media because it's intimidating to them, yeah, yeah. you know. But I looked at this thing, the information highway. The information I, highway. Oh, I love that concept. Yeah, it's such a good one. Absolutely. More kids need to be right there, yes. right next to the information You're highway. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, Mel King taught us that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I heard it in the middle of the night and it was Steve Jobs talking about the information. And I like perked up because I'm a, I'm a woman who has always loved intelligence and intellect and tools, you know? It's a tool for if you have contact with the world, if you have talent, your people will find you online. And if you think about the places we go, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they're free. Oh my goodness, they may not always be For free. For now, hopefully the <laughs> right, business plans right. change. Yes, exactly. Exactly, yeah. Exactly yeah, I, right. I'd rather gladly pay 20 bucks a month for those than have sure. uh, attention economy try and reel yes. me in. There's so much better we can do with mm. actually that data that we could mm -hmm. actually own and, mm -hmm. and make much better use of it. Oh, I agree. Oh, you're a wealth of wisdom because mm. we could we could easily just go off and spin into True. tons of <laughs> conversational topics mm. right now. But mm. I want people to know about what is it like being a part of the Supremes? Oh my. Like what what is it like to have because you know when we were 
um, talking about behind the groove as sure. well, Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is that most 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 people when they eat at a restaurant, sure. they don't see the chef and the and the yes. busters and the waiters, waitresses, and the and the menu That's decisions right. and the food ordering. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the music, a mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. You don't see the twelve people that are sure. involved. You only see the person singing. That's it. right. So, you get yeah. the end result. Yes. Sure. So teach us about the complexity mm. of of all. Of well, the my my. The thing is, I learned, and I, I will back up just a little bit. I sang with Ray Charles for a long time. My job was to do a solo, him playing the piano, and some of that's online, people can find it. And I was trusted, you understand? I was 19, 18 and 19 when I began with Ray. And he trusted me because I could sing what I was told to sing. I had a very quick memory, I could learn something just, you know, before you go on stage. I could read if it comes down to that. We could do it now and do it that way. And you, you can be depended on, you know, an 18 piece band, you're dealing with the big boys, you know. And if he say scat, I'd scat, you know. I could handle it. But the thing that I learned from him, every single night he'd sing, I can't stop loving you with the same depth of feeling the same passion, burn it down. And he used to say, I would sing for free. But don't tell anybody <laughs> until I'm gone, you know? Hey, I would sing for free. Because he knew I understood that. I could look that in the face. Yeah, yeah. And this is what I do. And I'll do it to my best ability every single time because that's what it's about. It's about those people who come out of themselves. Yeah. They come, they're going out and they need elevating, they need inspiring, they need uplifting, they need something a little bit out of the ordinary. And have you ever considered when you're on stage, you're up a little higher, you see? So people are looking up at you and they need to admire what they see when they get up there. I began with the Supremes after Ray, I sang with Stevie Wonder. We did a lot of writing and we were like big teenagers, you know, 24 seven, we'd show up at the studio in the middle of the night and do whatever we were doing, you know, and we recorded songs in the key of life and other things, but totally different. And it, believe me, it doesn't escape me that I worked with the two premier blind singers in the world, musicians in the world, but they each taught me an, an, a different thing. Stevie taught me how to really write a song, how to write it and then rewrite it. But when I, it came time for the Supremes, you know, and it's all about timing, it's all about that. My mother, once again, was on the executive board of the NAACP in Beverly Hills. And she was friends with Bob Jones. Bob Jones was the head of publicity at Motown. And he told her that Cindy Bird's song was leaving and would I be interested? She called me and said, how would you like to be a Supreme? Okay. And I thought, well, I haven't done that before, but that sounds interesting. Because as a teenager, you know, I grew up in New York and we saw those three little girls from Detroit. We saw them come along. We saw the one with the big eyes. <laughs> we saw the one with the little heart-shaped face. To the other one who was voluptuous and looked like a Barbie doll. You know, there was something for everyone in the Supremes. That was the key. So she said, would you like to do that? And I said, yes. <laughs> and they sent a limousine, a, a, what was it? A big Mercedes limousine, long white car with blacked out windows that had belonged to George Harrison, the Beatle. And they came to pick me up from Wonder Love rehearsal. Now, I didn't tell anyone I was leaving Wonder Love rehearsal. I just got in that car and went on, you know, and they're still friends. We are still friends. Wonder Love, Nate Watts is still with Stevie Wonder. Shirley Brewer, Denise Williams, I spoke to just the other night, you know, because Free has been recorded again. It's going to be someone, Norman Brown's first single off of his album. And that's songwriting. Good song, a song is a song is a song, goes on forever. So I went into the Supremes and 
Sherry Payne, Mary Wilson were so gracious to me. And I knew it was difficult because Cindy was their friend, you know, but she was leaving to do other things. It was an opportunity to see firsthand real pros, real pros. And I've always been in a professional setting, but this was on a different level. The glamour, the clothing, the big hair. <laughs> well, I'm from Texas, you know, we love big hair, right? But the thing that impressed me more than anything is you would see the same people around the world. I'd say, well, well how are you here? We just saw you in New York and here we are in Switzerland. I said, I save my money, okay? I save my money so I can get on a plane and go and support you. Well, that's a legacy, yeah. you see? Yeah. It's a legacy. I say in the show, when three little girls went to Detroit, in Detroit, went to see Mr. Barry Gordy, they were Mary Wilson, Florence Ballard, and Diana Ross. Then Cindy Birdsong came in the group, and they became Diana Ross and the Supremes. Then Jean Terrell replaced Diana Ross. They had a whole bunch of other hits. Then Linda Lawrence came in the group, Sherry Payne, and myself, the last Supreme. But the thing about the Supremes is, and I found it difficult from time to time once I left the group because people expect you to be a Supreme. And I'm just to say, you know? But that's part, that's a great part of what I do and what I love and I love the glamour and the, you know, the whole thing. And the people, we saw, we were at the Catalina just a few nights ago. And we saw people I've known since, I mean, 40 years, 40 years. Still coming out, still supporting yeah. you, but online. Oh, now we've got another world, yeah, okay? Yeah. You've got people online right now who are talking about the dresses, the songs, the earrings, the shoes. <laughs> it affected their lives. That's what impressed me and made me realize it was a, a minor miracle, you know, to see people who, I know I have favorite songs that like take me there, you know? I can think of a song right off hand. Yeah. There's a summer place. And go right back, Sandra uh -huh. D and uh -huh. Troy Donahue. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my God, with his fine self. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. There's a song in everybody's life to create that for other ah, people ah, is such a beautiful stuff. thing. That's yeah. some good stuff. Yeah. Know? It's primo. It really mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. But you know, you don't know. To, oh, expand someone's awareness. Yes. That's another one of these things exactly that we right. care so much about. Yes. You watch a piece of content mm. where someone just teaches you something sure. where you go, whoa, seeing the world in this mm. new way. Sure. <gasps> I have to go share this with other people. Sure. I maybe want to build something with that. Sure. And so that is the, oh. <laughs> the heartwarming yeah, stuff, yeah, you know, so it's true. You also said, this was so cool that you said this, that um, Ray mm. said that he would do what he does for free. Yes. Because when you do what you love, yes. it doesn't feel like work. That's you right. You would do it every single day, no matter what. Absolutely I'd would. Set up, I'd set up this equipment. Sure. Any, to interview anytime. anytime. I like know. I love interviewing sure. people that are 24 hours. hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's open. It's open. Sure. And um, the one thing that I'd say about that is mm. I think there's more research coming out about the less mm. a CEO or an entrepreneur gets paid, yes. the harder they work. Sure. So when they start making too much money, they start mm. spending their money on more things and, sure. and losing sight of the vision That's at times. That's very true. But also, if you make money, sometimes you can put that into cool, doing cool things like maybe hiring editors mm -hmm. or hiring marketers, um, distribution sure. channels. So there's some sort of balance to have there. Yes. But I like I love that point. And you also <laughs> you, you you know you took us through a, an evolution of of yes. the Supremes and. And, and also just how, like having a fan fly mm. to Switzerland Aww. to see you it's after seeing the USS. Sure. Yeah, that just, that's so, it so It really beautiful. is. You know, we went to England last year and it was so cold. <laughs> it was, but people came out, 
you know, we had sold out shows all across and you see people, these songs affected people. And you don't realize when you write a song how it's going to affect people. You don't. It's a it's an obscure thing. Yeah, like this shit, like who's like how exactly. are you how are your words gonna affect people on this show? <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's very it's true. obscure, yeah. That's right. But you you're know. very careful with your curation of your mm. words, just like you are with your songs. Yes. Yeah. That's true. I am. I mean, you know, to have Stevie Wonder say, you know, you're I mean, Stevie Wonder we're talking about. To have him say, you know, you're one of the best lyricists I've ever met. Well, you know, I'm good for a long time now. I, hey, <laughs> you know. But words are important. Yes. Words are important. They put our thoughts into reality. Yes. And conversation, you know, it's, it's a conversation. A love song, there's nothing like a love song. And unconditional love, oddly enough, I mean, I wrote it with Jeffrey Chin. Jeffrey had a track. Okay, he's my, my good friend from San Francisco. He's a tremendous pianist and arranger. He does a lot of film stuff. He said, I got this track. You know, he said, I don't, I don't really write like pop music, you know, but I got this track and you, you need to hear this track. And I, he played it for me over the phone. And this is funny, because I write with Stevie Wonder over the phone too. But he said, listen to it. I listened to it. I went away. I got back to him. It just came out. You know, I wrote the melody and the lyrics, and it just, something fits or it doesn't. You can just pick it out of the air. It's there already. Uh -huh. You know, it is. Uh -huh. It's a magical process. And I played it, and you know, there's a little fear involved, because when you, you write something, you know, that's his track. I'm like, is he going to like that melody? But you heard it. You know, it's magic. It's, magic. it's magic. It's good fun. Yes. It's sexy, and it's... It's one of those, you know, we need more music, you can dance with your baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? You can, yeah. you know, come on. This is what you were pointing at earlier of sure. what, is, what is occurring in the music yes. industry right now. Yes. Why don't we see more unconditional mm. love style music? Mm. We see more violence, don't we? Because if you're talking about violence and young people are listening, then they get hard, they become hardened. They, they become inured to, you know, they're afraid to be soft. They're afraid to be tender, Horrible. you know. I mean, there's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It has made for... That's where the truest humanity comes That's out. right. You know, it's a very basic thing. Tones, the tones, musical tones. You know, you can hear, and because I sing high, you know, certain high tones, I can hear... Uh, radio waves, you know, it's really high and I find it just very annoying, but you know, it's part of life. But it's only because my ear is trained to that. But my heart, my heart is trained to love. To love. Absolutely. I want to tell you about BeRoyal.com. One more time. BeRoyal, B-E-Royal.com. BeRoyal.com is a video site. It's on Facebook, it's part of Facebook. And there are almost 40,000 members. And these are people who come on there and make videos of themselves, of what's going on in their lives. Some of them are struggling, some of them are happy, some of them, like people are and like people do. But they talk about what's going on in their own lives. And then other people come and support them. Non-judgmental. There's not another place like this on earth. It was started by Bryant McGill and Jenny Young McGill, his wife. And they wrote a book called Simple Reminders. Simple Reminders, it's just little aphorisms, little things like, I think of one of mine, right? A <laughs> good one. Listening. Listening is the beginning of almost every human contact. Listening, little statements like that, that people can read every day, that's simple reminders. And they decided, because uh, Bryant has a billion, literally, a billion followers. He has more followers than Oprah online, you know? And it's because they touch the nerve of it. We live in a society where people judge you all the time. The internet is anonymous to a great extent. 
You can say what you want, you can burn somebody down. Never know who you are. We've lost human contact and it gets worse. It gets worse and it will as it goes along if it continues the same way. They call it social media, but how social is it? You know? You go on, you get addicted to the what is it? What is it you get addicted to? The followers, the subscribers, there the likes. There you go. The vanity metrics. Sure. The sure. the 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 attention economy that you're just yes. you're 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 marketed to like a psychometric profile. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. And it's damaging to the human psyche and people don't even realize it. So Brian and Jenny decided to start a site where people could come and inspire and uplift and support each other. There's no other place like that on earth. Beroyal.com. The that. royalty. Links in the bio. Links in the bio. Yes. Check it out. Beroyal.com. The, the royalty is manners. Royalty is manners. Good and intent. humanity. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good exactly. Intent. It's a very loving thing. And it has brought people literally out of the doldrums. People who have been addicted to drugs, people who are lonely, yes, yes, yes. so many. And then just, you know, people who just want to talk to people, want to share their lives. They make a little video, two minutes long, or talk 15 minutes if you want. Yes. But it's a tremendous idea beyond beroyal.com. There it's are what other, it should be in life. And there are now finally more and more communities yes. developing out like this. Yes. And we're now starting to also leverage machine learning to be able to see that, oh, you feel a certain way. Sure. There are actually other people around you that are actually <laughs> communicating with you on this thread that sure. you can go and meet with in person. So you yes. don't need to just do it online. Exactly. And, so, yeah, and so, it brings us back. Exactly. It, brings it us does. Back. It brings us back to human to human. I so believe because, you know, being human, if you think about it, we're the only, what shall we call a species, who has that choice. We are given choice to do what we want, to live the way we want to live. And to waste it, to me, is a great crime. It's a crime. We are stunted and stilted by people's limits, other people's perspective, other people, the way other people think about you. But we have the ability to override that. I'm very much believing that this year, which I think is, you know, hopefully <laughs> will be a better year for all of us, you know. Yeah. The possibility yeah. is there. Yeah. But in the ways that we haven't considered, the ways of joining together, the way of uplifting, the way of helping each other, the way of supporting, the way of inspiring, of making people feel good about themselves and building self-esteem. We have real problems on Earth. We're going to run out of water. Some places they're already out of water. That's as basic as it gets. We can't live without water. Most of the entrepreneurs, the scientists, thank God for the Raw Science Film Festival, yes. to get to talk to people who are in the scientific community are thinking off world already. Yeah. Well, at the edge of knowledge there you of go. solving the world's problems. There you go. Yeah. You and know? this is, so tell us about your passion for STEAM advocacy. Yes. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know, I have always known what I was going to do. I have always painted, sung, written songs, created in any way that's possible. And photography, almost anything, I've been willing to jump in and try that. But there are limits. You know, there's the starving artist syndrome, and I don't believe in that. Why should you starve? You should succeed if you are talented and you work as hard as you do. But you have to have confidence in what you do and know what you're doing. The thing about STEAM, though, I was very happy to have been thrown in to a group of people, and it was through the Google Lunar X Prize. Cool. You know, you I love X yes. prizes. Oh! Incentivizing innovation is Fabulous. such an amazing thing. It really is. We need to do more of it. it. Crowdsourcing ideas. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. It raises the bar. Yeah. You know, the the think tank, the mind group. You know, intelligence. The people. I was I was an advisor for Canada's team, Team Plan B, and I was just enthralled because it was a love story. You know. The Dobryanskis, husband and wife, so intelligent, so, you know, science was their base. 
But they came out of Ukraine and they went to Canada and they got involved with this prize. And it was a family effort. And that just, you know, that warmed my heart. So they, between rooting for them, talking back and forth to them, I met some other lovely people. Azam, I don't know if you, you know Azam, Azam Shigagi. I don't think so. And Farnaz. They both were involved, yes. They both were involved with raw science. And that's how I met Carrie, you know. But I've always loved science. I loved chemistry. I loved biology. I loved mathematics. I loved all of the things that, you know, I, I wasn't allowed to do because I grew up at a time when a girl did certain girl things and boys were encouraged to do science and math and you see, but I had this desire and I would read, I'd read, I'd go to the library, that's how I spent my Saturdays growing up in New York, in the main library there. I would get chemistry books and read them, you know, and I'm like fascinated and in gemology and just, I mean, just so many things, earth science, just was thrilling to me. And then to come along and find that this is a thing, <laughs> STEM and yeah. STEAM. And Carrie, Carrie Kukro, yeah. pure shout genius. So pure genius, yes. you know, a ballet dancer who suddenly said, okay, and I'm a good ballet dancer. I said, yes, but I could be an engineer. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. And what an example for other young women, you know? Yeah. We've talked. Totally. She and Azam and Farnaz and I talk about the world and what's possible for girls. The most thrilling thing last year was the Afghan girls' robotic yeah, team. Royal. Oh, yeah, Royal. To and know they built their robot from household goods. I mean, you can't get any better. Talk about inspiring. And then the one young lady whose father was killed because they did that. That's as serious as it gets. And yet because they went forward, because they embraced it and dug in, there are schools being built now for girls, science schools. And then to see, for Carrie to say, okay, we've got science over here, and we've got art over here mind meld you know yeah. it it's just it's perfect yeah to me it is a perfect situation it really is there's a there's a certain equality of opportunity and yes. an equal ec economic degrees of freedom that need to be raised across the planet for all people as soon as possible, like a baseline of yes. socioeconomics and degrees of freedom Absolutely. that give people those basic needs and mm -hmm. ways to actualize themselves. And yes. so STEM and STEAM is, is one of those things that enables us to raise that baseline up and then it gives us the tools we need to do things like become an interplanetary, exactly. solve aging, exactly. go through all these extremely exciting sure. challenges. Now, okay couple quick questions on the way out, okay? Mm -hmm. A couple quick questions are, what would you say is a driving core principle of yours? Of mine? Yeah. Kindness. Kindness, because I think more than anything other than maybe truth, when you're kind to people, it's, it's like a, a healing once again. Anything that's gone wrong in our world can be healed by kindness, you know? Yeah. And that principle carries me, uplifts me enough to make me be happy and grateful to people. I'm grateful for what is coming. And that's what makes it come, you know? But kindness, if I was remembered by one thing, I would want it to be that, that people thought, oh, she's kind. She was kind to me. It doesn't, you know, you can give gifts, yes. you can give money, you can give opportunities, but your time, you can't get time back. If you give your time to people, and why not, you know? Why not help someone? Why not, why not uplift someone? We have that capacity. Yeah. We have the brain power to think about that. And the other thing I would have to say would be peace.
because I'm a great, great advocate for peace. I'm the national director for film, music, and the arts for the Peace Prize Foundation. And I'm, we're just getting ready really to jump off and do some tremendous things because peace is not just about saying no war. If each of us had an individual peace, you like to yeah, read. Yeah. And are you peaceful while you're reading? Oh yeah. When you're painting, peaceful as can be. When you create anything, love, peaceful, you know? Yeah. It's a yeah. great, great concept. Yeah. And it's just so broad. I love that. I love peace. I love it too. <laughs> Kindness and peace uh. leave awake behind you everywhere you go you that's bring true. it with you and then it just butterflies effect into that's other true. things and people that's so true um another question on the way out is this wouldn't be simulation if we didn't ask you are hmm. we in a simulation hmm. i don't know it's very matrixy <laughs> <laughs> i love it the thing about it is you know if we if this is not our real our reality it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of like it. Yeah. And I kind of can get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you yep, know? Yep. Sure. I would say it probably is a simulation in certain ways. In certain ways. Uh, sure. Uh, but I like that concept. I can handle it. You're, you you're, you've, uh, you've leveled up your attribute of singing and songwriting to max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And stab. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I like okay. that. And there's always room to keep to keep growing. Absolutely. Okay, and last question. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Uh, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh, it has very much, I'd have to say love. You know, there's nothing like being in love. It's real special. You know, it is. I recommend it highly. I don't necessarily recommend marriage, because everybody can't handle marriage. <laughs> you know, it takes some commitment and some other stuff, mm -hmm. some consideration, you know, and a whole lot of kindness, understanding, and all of that. But I definitely love, you know, it's just the most glorious thing. It is. Yeah. And I, that's why I write love songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Oh, you can't do any better than that. When I say, you know, uh, <laughs> there's just so many words, you know. I know. But it's, it's engendering a tenderness and finding that in another person, you know. Yeah. And it's infinite, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It yeah. just goes on and on. And I think if people realize that, they'd be a lot happier. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> oh, this has been oh, so wonderful. Well, the pleasure's mine. Yeah. The pleasure's all mine. Say, thank, thank you, you so, so much for coming. It's out my pleasure. Show. Yeah. My joy. You, you are such a wealth <laughs> of wisdom. We have to have you back. No, the recording please studio do. in SF's always open to you. We'll let you know when thank we're back in LA. Thank you so much. This thank is, you. Yeah, this has been such an honor and a pleasure. What is it saying the song? All you got to do is call. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. All I right. love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and there's so much unconditional love for you all. Thank yes. you so much for tuning in. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you've been thinking. Check out the links below. Um, BeRoyal.com. Yes. Also, what is another good link? Well, you? you can find me online at, on Twitter at Suse, S-U-S-A-Y-E. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Instagram's kind of new to me, but I'm getting it. I'm loving I'm it. it. It's kind of wild, you know? It's like it the wild, wild west. Wild west. <laughs> yes, it is. So but we got all those links below. Sure. Go and check them out. Sure. Um, keep supporting great artists and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that you highly want to increase their impact on the world. So go and continue supporting them, supporting us, so we can keep doing cool things like this. And lastly, go and build the future, everyone. Go and manifest your destiny into Ooh. the world. We love you so much, yes. and we'll see you soon. Peace, <laughs> Peace for real. <laughs> That's it. That's a wrap. Bravo. That's Bravo. lovely. That's Bravo. lovely. Bravo. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. You're wonderful. You are wonderful.